One of the questions I've gotten repeatedly over the years, even to this day, mostly from normies, though not exclusively from normie types, is why I don't have children, why I never had children. And it's, of course, a given that as I'm pushing 50, the assumption would be that I must have gotten married and must have had children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, exceptions to that have always existed. That's not really the point. But I tend not to want to get in the weeds with normies about this stuff. And in general, I tend not to want to get in the weeds for my reasons with respect to other people, which is to say people who are not neurotypical or live in their own online bubbles or what have you. But I certainly have my reasons. Now, although I'm very sympathetic to the idea of antinatalism, I myself am not a proponent of antinatalism for anyone but myself, as it were. I'm, I'm not trying to proscribe the idea of procreation, mostly for pragmatic reasons. Organisms just exist, and they just reproduce. That's what they do. But as far as I'm concerned, there are all sorts of reasons. The very, very basic reason was I never wanted to have kids. That lack of desire has always been there. It just never occurred to me. It was not something that I truly, truly wanted. And of course, that's difficult to understand, but it's like any desire. You may or may not have it. Some people really, really enjoy certain types of foods. Other people don't. Of course, in come the comments now. Stardust, how dare you compare the desire to have children with your favorite type of pizza? Well, at the end of the day, it's all a question of degree, right? But I just never had it. And I think a lot of reasoning as pertains to human beings comes down to whatever your initial desire is, you engage in a kind of post hoc reasoning process to justify that. Now, I'm not trying to justify it to the rest of the world, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to just that. I just never wanted to have children. Now, in addition to that, there are all sorts of reasons why I should never have had children. One thing is the cost. I've never made a ton of money and having children would have bankrupted me. There's no question about that. And it's funny how people at that juncture, when you mention that, will jump in, especially if they're not normies, and say, well, look at all these people on welfare popping up kids left and right. Okay, just because they're doing that doesn't mean it's a good idea for the rest of us to do that. I don't really see the point in following the footsteps of idiocy and negligence, to be perfectly honest, but that's just my take. And of course, there are all sorts of other arguments people throw at you. Oftentimes they'll say, what are you going to do if you get really old and you'll die and blah, blah, blah. They'll say something to you along the lines of a threat. What are you going to do if you're really old and you don't have children to help take care of you? Well, in all likelihood, I'm probably going to euthanize myself if I get old enough and I no longer can function properly. But apart from that, there's this notion that you hear all the time about how children are going to take care of you and get older. But you actually talk to caretakers, people who work in nursing homes or what have you, it's really 50-50 at best. The kids shove the parents into a nursing home and shuffle off and visit them once a year or something like that. So it really is hit or miss. I've actually met human beings who have reproduced literally for fear of being lonely or were planning on it. I've met a couple of these people. They said, I had kids because I didn't want to be alone and I was afraid. That doesn't seem like a good reason to me. If anything, you're projecting your fear upon your offspring for reasons and then just hoping for the best. And you actually have no control of that. That seems to be a silly reason, the kind of threat that people level at you saying, well, if you don't have kids, you're going to die wasting away by yourself. Sure, maybe, and not really reason, at least for me to have children because of some sort of abstract threat like that. Like I said, whatever happens, if it gets to the point that I can no longer function, I will probably euthanize myself. So it doesn't really matter. But partly as it ties in with money, but also, more generally, what I think about my own genetic contribution, I don't think I could give children a good life, even if I had had the desire. Again, it all goes back to my primary lack of desire, ultimately. I don't want to eat anchovies on pizza. I don't want to have kids. Yes, I know it's a question of degree, but all things when it comes to human desires and wishes are a question of degree. So there you go. Now, let's say I did have enough money. Let's say I were swimming in money or regularly making high six figures. Would I then have children? Well, no, again, due to that lack of desire. But on top of that, there simply would be no guarantee I could provide a good life for them. Because my view is that life entails a lot of unnecessary suffering, and I don't want to contribute to that. And here you might hear my sympathies for antinatalism. I'm not an antinatalist, axiomatically speaking, but for myself, I think that 
my children probably would suffer a great deal and not have a particularly good life in this hypothetical. People will then say, well, you don't know that. Well, you do. There's going to be some suffering in life, and there is conversely no guarantee of joy or happiness. There's simply a guarantee of pain and suffering on some level. Now, I'm not saying that's what all life is about, avoiding suffering, but it seems to me something relevant. And when you look at the world today, I think very, very few people, even if they have the financial means, can provide a quote-unquote good life for their children. But again, people do not think about this in these philosophical, high-minded terms. People either want to have kids or they don't, and they want to reproduce and replicate their DNA or they don't. That's just the way it is. Everything that comes after that is an afterthought, some sort of post hoc argumentation, what have you. I'm no different, but I do think the cultural and environmental circumstances of today are not particularly great for children. Time and again, I've encountered many folk, whether they were normies or not, both types actually, above all conservatives, parents thought they were in control, they thought they would direct them and do the right thing. But in reality, and this is something that parents really struggle to come to terms with, the peer group is just much more important than the parents are after a certain age. End of story. That's been proven and shown again and again and again in psychological and social experiments, and it's an observable fact. So if they go off the deep end, despite whatever measures you might have taken to quote-unquote raise them correctly, it's not really your fault, but it's still not going to end in a result that you wanted. Now, it's astonishing in the case of normies that I converse with about this, because they're the ones most of the time who ask me this question, that A, they can't comprehend that all human desire is primary and everything that comes after that is post hoc rationalization and or argumentation, but also the reasons listed. They just don't think about this stuff. And that's at the end of the day what makes a normie. A normie is a person who is neurotypical, in my book at least, who does not deviate from certain ways of thinking and finds it very difficult to think outside of the box in that regard and think in alternative ways. Now, there are also non-normies who cannot grasp it, and what they do is engage in their own strange post hoc rationalization, such as, you owe it to your ancestors. I don't really know what that means. Your ancestors weren't thinking about it in those terms, I can assure you. They were simply popping out kids because all organisms want to reproduce on average at least, and that's what they did. Again, just another version of after the fact rationalization. My favorite one is, oh, you have a modicum of intelligence. You should reproduce. As if that were some guarantee for a good life. As if only intelligence mattered. I'm not even that smart. But that's not a reason to reproduce, to my mind. Because many, many smart people, far smarter than I have ever been or ever will be, have suffered a great deal and have had miserable lives. Now, again, we're coming back to this concept of suffering. I do think suffering matters to some degree. That's not universally the case. In fact, if you talk to religious people, I've had a lot of experience talking to Catholics about that. Suffering doesn't matter really at all. You're just supposed to have kids, and even if they're in agony all the time, you're, that's fine, and you just accept that. But that's certainly not my mindset. But on a final point, I would just say that most human intuitions about what is good and what is bad come after the fact. If you're going to have any takeaway from this video in addition to why I personally don't have kids and don't want to ever have kids and never had kids, then the takeaway should be that most of our justifications for things, most of our reasoning around things is after the fact. That we all have certain innate desires we will try to argue for them post factum, as opposed to these being neutral, simply emerging out of the ether and then offering arguments for that. And that's how everything works. Religious views, philosophical views, political views, desire to have children, you name it, it is always after the fact. Because ultimately, our desires, how we think about the world, the universe, it's been inscrutable, to say the least. In fact, it's completely inscrutable why we think certain things. Why we think certain things is not an intelligible question because we can't even answer this question. Thoughts simply emerge. Our desires come from somewhere, though we don't know exactly. We can try to create a narrative or a nice story as to why we think a certain way, but it's probably not going to be accurate in the slightest. And so we exist in this world of justifying our beliefs and desires after the fact, which is why I don't try to inflict my beliefs or desires on other people. I just tell it like I think for myself, and if other people think that's good, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. So in light of a recent question I received from a normie 
and the fact that I've received this question again and again and again over the years. There you go. The reason why I don't have kids and also the reason why we do anything after the fact reasoning. So as always, thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment if you've not yet done so. And if I'm still alive, I will check you out later. May the gods watch you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.